Hey everybody, welcome back to First Church of God and happy Sunday. I hope that you are experiencing the presence of God and uh, that you are working at just living constantly in the presence of God because that is where we're going to find peace and direction. Hey, I was thinking back when I was about 12, 13 years old, I started working and I would mow grass and uh, it was a lot of work because I had a push mower. No, the, all the power was in my little self. And I was a scrawny kid. I mean, I was scrawny. My striped pajamas had one stripe. <laughs> I was pretty skinny. I graduated high school. I was six foot one, weighed 110 pounds. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the windy days were dangerous for me. But I would mow the grass and I would make maybe five, 10 bucks doing it. It was a lot of hard work. And I was a bit of a hoarder or a saver of my money. And I would take my money and I would roll it up and I would put a rubber band around it. And it was nothing for me to have a few hundred dollars uh, laid in my dresser drawer that I could spend on my hobbies or anything else that I wanted to. Uh, because, you know, I was just a kid. I didn't have a lot of expenses or anything like that. It was wonderful. And then my brother would need some money. He'd come to borrow from me. <laughs> I made him fill out loan papers uh, because I wanted to make sure I got my money back. Now, of all that money I had way back then, I still have the rubber band that held it together. Things have changed over time. And isn't it good that we have a God that cares about us and that we are able to earn and have and uh, those things? So when I was a kid... I thought that I was very wealthy because I had this wad of money. <laughs> now I just have that rubber band. But that's okay. That's okay. Um, but are we wealthy? If you think about yourself and compare yourself, which we're not supposed to compare ourselves to anybody else, but if we compare ourselves to other countries, we're some of the most wealthy people in the world. In fact, we're we're crazy wealthy in our country compared to a lot of other countries. Most of us have eaten today already, or we're getting ready to eat, and many people that are watching today are gonna eat two, three meals, as well as snacks in between. Uh, uh, you might be eating one meal, you just start really early and end really late. But, uh, wealth is not necessarily measured in the amount of possessions and dollars that an individual has. I believe that true wealth is measured in the amount of relationships an individual has with others and with their God. <clears throat> Having money and possessions is not wrong. In fact, the Bible tells us that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not, it's not saying that money is bad. It's saying that when we love it more than God, that's when we have a conflict. We have been talking over the past few weeks that we are stewards or we are managers of all that God has entrusted us with because everything that we have truly belongs to the Lord. And if we don't manage it well, it's going to be taken from us and go to somebody else. But in the end, it all goes back to God. <clears throat> and it's important that we are careful how we uh, manage our time, our talent, and our treasure. It's not just about those. It's about our ability and our attitude of how we handle those things. If something happens to your car or your house, your investments, are you the type of person that gets bummed? Or are you the type of person that says, you know what? That's not mine. It belongs to God. He's got me. He's taking care of me. He's going to take care of this. What God is calling us to do with our time, our talent, and our treasure is to be generous in our worship service, we often mention about our offering plates. And I think we need to change the name of those things and call them generosity plates because it's an opportunity for us to be generous to God who is so generous to us. I'm reminded of what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. It says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor, their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store and seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness." Wow, that's a great passage of scripture. And it reminds us, I think, I think it's fairly self-explanatory, yet it tells us that to sow or to plant uh, is what we are supposed to be doing. 
And the whole idea or the whole concept of planting and reaping is very important. I believe that the challenge of this passage is that we sow or we plant, that we do it consistently. That we're not just giving money to the church, but we're giving our time and our talent and our treasure for others to receive as well. So we're not just sowing into an offering plate, we're sowing into the kingdom of God. And it isn't amazing that God would choose normal people like you and me to build his kingdom. We don't feel like we're worthy, yet he sees us as more than worthy to sow into his kingdom. Otherwise, he wouldn't have chosen us to do it. But we are to give our talent uh, and our resources generously to others as well. <clears throat> Sometimes when we're uh, planting in a literal sense, we have to work the soil so the soil is able to receive the seed and the seed is able to take root. Many people, uh, when, when um, they grow a garden, they have an abundance of what they have planted. And what do they do? Hey, anybody need some tomatoes? Anybody need some cucumbers? And they bring them to church on Sunday morning so that they uh, have an abundance. Just because they have a, a bumper crop doesn't mean that they stop planting. They continue to plant because they enjoy what they're able to harvest. And we've got to choose to sow frequently and generously with a happy heart. And the condition of our heart matters to God. It isn't that we're just planting in other soil, but the con we got to take care of the condition of our own soil. Uh, and that's something that we need to be concerned about. One day Jesus was at the temple, and we read about this in Mark chapter 12, verse 41. He says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. <clears throat> Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor woman has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty, putting in everything all she had to live on. Now notice there in verse 41, what was Jesus doing? He watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. He watched them. <clears throat> I heard the story about a school lunch and the one of the teachers put a sign in front of this pile of apples and said, only take one, God is watching you. Only take one apple, God is watching you. On another table, some student took a piece of paper and they wrote a note, there was a pile of cookies and they wrote a note that said, go ahead and take as many as you want, God's watching the apples. Do you think that God was watching the amount that the people gave or Jesus was watching the amount that people gave or was he watching their attitude? This widow put in all that she had, but uh, she didn't do it because she felt she had to. She did it in faith that God would take care of her. I heard about a church in a foreign country that when you walk in, there was a table, and on that table, there were two large jars, and they were full of rice. And when asked, what are these jars of rice for? The pastor of the church said, we have two here. One is for taking, one is for giving. If you don't have food, you can take a handful of rice, go home, and you can feed a family of four with a handful of rice. But if you have it to give, go ahead and put it. And since we've done this, neither jar has ever been empty. <clears throat> When it comes to our time, our talent, and our treasure, I believe Jesus wants us to be generous, not just with our treasure or our money, but with everything that he has entrusted us with. Think about what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24. It says, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the ha habit of doing, but encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, you know, there's a lot of fear about COVID and a lot of fear about sickness. And I'm afraid that we've gotten a little bit too comfortable in our lazy boy when it comes to Sunday morning. And if you live close to the, a church, you need to be going. If you live in Cushing, please come through the doors here. If you need to wear a mask, wear a mask. But we really think that you need to be here. We need the fellowship with one another. Uh, so you're going, it, 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 um, um. Many of you, when you come into the church, you are so good about dropping your tithes and offerings in the offering plate. Some of you, 
Very good. Mail it in. P.O. Box 936, Cushing, Oklahoma, 74023. It's on the Facebook page. Go ahead and find it. Keep on your great job, and I commend you on what you are doing, and I, I praise you and thank you for what you're doing to bless this church. Now, I have a challenge that you take a few more steps as you enter into this place. To, this helps us fulfill what it's saying in Hebrews 10. So these are three Ps. I get extra points for the Ps. No, I don't. I, get, I give credit to my friend Andrew up in Pryor who shared these with me. When you come into this place, I want you to put encouragement into someone else. Specifically, pick one person. Put encouragement into one person. So when you come in, think about who you might encourage. Sometimes it's as simple as a handshake. It's not finding your place. It's not finding your pew. You've got to go around and lift somebody up. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore, be an encouragement to one another. Uh, you don't know what kind of week that other individual has had. And if you welcome them and encourage them, find somebody else the next week. So we need to be coming into the building with praying, saying, Father, give me eyes to see who you want to be, want me to put encouragement into. So put encouragement into somebody. Second P. Uh, oh, let me back up. Don't have tunnel vision when you walk into the church. Don't think about, I got to sit in my pew. It's not yours. Your name isn't on it. <clears throat> but encourage each other because there are lonely people sitting among you. Uh, and all the lonely people, where do they all come from? They come from God. And they were created to connect with each other. And I challenge you to show up early so you can put encouragement into someone else. So walk in praying, God, who do you want me to encourage today? Another thing is pray for someone by name. So when you get in here, Start learning names. I know I'm not the best at remember, remembering names. I have to write them down, but I think you can do that. Remember other people's names and and pray for them specifically by name um, because that will bless you and it will bless them. Put encouragement into others and pray for somebody by name. And number three, participate beyond convenience. Well, we mentioned last week how so many people are looking for what's the bare minimum I have to do. It's time to uh, put the bare minimum aside, and we need to start thinking about how can I bless God by blessing others? How might I be crazy generous to God through my time, my talent, my treasure, and my touch this day? We have got to move beyond self and into community. It's not about being an introvert or an extrovert. It's about being a child of God. Jesus is watching our attitudes when, we, when it comes to how we manage our time, our talent, our treasure, and our touch. And the Bible calls us to do a thing called tithe. A tithe is 10% of our income. It also says that we should each determine on our own heart how we should give. So when we give a tithe, when we give 10%, anything beyond that is an offering. And, and that's is what God wants us to do. And I know tithing is an Old Testament teaching. It's a little bit in the New Testament, but it's about being generous and having the right ha attitude. If I had a candle in my hand, if I had two candles and one was lit and one wasn't, if I take and touch the one that is lit to the one that isn't, does the one that is lit give up light? No, it multiplies its light. And it's, I think it's the same way when it comes to giving. Uh, the, it, we start to double it and any other candle that the flame touches, it multiplies the light. It never grows dimmer. So here's the lesson that I think all of us need to learn. God's grace has no limit. His generosity is boundless. And when he gives to us, he, he's not made any less by it. And when we give to others, what are we doing? We're gaining. We're becoming a blessing unto the Lord. So we need to make the decision today. And that decision is, I will be generous to others because God has been generous to me. I will be generous to others because God has been generous to me. This church, financially, we're doing okay. We're paying the bills. We're keeping the lights on. The pastor's getting paid. Things are going good. We are even being a blessing to other churches, not just here in Cushing, but around the world uh, uh, through our missions giving. And I think we're going to talk a little bit about that next Sunday. For years, this church has supported ministries outside its four walls, and uh, it's just been a blessing to love on others in that way. For the last several weeks, I've been sharing about stewardship. 
because God calls us to be good stewards and we are going to be held accountable for how we manage what he has entrusted us with, how we have handled our time, our talent, our treasure, and our touch. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be a not enough room to, for it to be stored. Do you want to test God? This is where you do it. And, and, and um, I share this message to remind us that we have a responsibility as children of God to be found faithful with what he has entrusted us with. The question comes down to this. Do you trust him or do you trust yourself? My trust is in God. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye-bye.